Hi, greetings from Helsinki. Today I will talk about the SKIP database. My name is Bo Baldak and I work at the European Chemicals Agency. We'll have a look at the goals of the SKIP database and the practical day-to-day -day implementation. So without further ado, let's have a look. The main objective of the SKIP database is to reduce the content of hazardous substances in materials and products. And therefore, we want to push for substitution. Substitution remains the foremost goal of the SKIP database. At the same time, we want to contribute to a more circular economy, so if the substances cannot be substituted by safer alternatives, we want to improve their waste treatment operations, meaning we want to make sure that hazardous substances are not recycled into new products and separated for separate treatment. Also, the SKIP database will improve the knowledge for authorities on the use of these hazardous substances. So these are the threefold goals of the SKIP database. Then, when does a SKIP notification duty apply if you're a company um, producing, selling or um, importing um, products containing substance of very high concern? Well, the threshold is the following. Um, whenever there is a substance of very high concern, as defined under REACH, in a concentration of 0.1% weight by weight, uh, contained into an article, then there is a duty to supply um, the information needed to allow it safe use. I said this is an extension of the REACH duty which existed since more than 10 years, and therefore this is not fully new, but it extends in a way that now this information also needs to be provided to the um, European Chemicals Agency and not just within the supply chain. Who needs to make such notifications? Um, well, it more or less um, applies to all the actors in the supply chain. So that starts at the top with the EU producers and importers, um, but also it applies to assemblers or distributors. Where it does not apply is to retailers that uh, only supply to consumers. So what type of information do these actors need to um, provide to the European Chemicals Agency? There are three main categories. There is, first of all, <clears throat> information about the article itself. So a description of the product or the article containing the uh, substance of very high concern. Then the concern element itself needs to be described. What is the um, substance of very high concern that is um, in the product? And what is its concentration range? How much of it um, is in the product, for instance? Um, and then we also need some other descriptive factors, like what is it made of? What material? Um, what is um, the product family of this type of um, article? And finally, we need uh, information to describe its safe use. So these are the three main elements that need to be provided and um, provided to ECHA. So ECHA can um, pass that information on to waste operators and consumers. So, as I already said, ECHA will make this data publicly available. So, what comes in also goes out. The information is fully um, publicly uh, available and transparent. <clears throat> that also means that the information will be provided as received. So, the data quality remains the responsibility of the data submitter. ECHA will make sure from its side that confidential business information is not requested and if so, um, if it would anyway be included in the database, in the information requested, then it will not be published. Then let's have a look at how SKIP notifications can be made towards the SKIP database. What do you have to do to make such notifications and which tools are available. This is a very complicated picture to describe the IT landscape that ECHA has made available to submit um, notifications and to make them available to the wider public. You will see on the left-hand side the input side. In the middle, it's the processing by ECHA. 
and at the uh, right hand side you will see the output. But um, don't pay too much attention to the picture, um, I will explain in a bit more detail. So if you have um, established that you have to make skip notifications based on the above rules that I explained, then you can select um, three different ways to make a skip notification. Uh, first of all, you can make a um, um, skip notification preparing it online in Euclid Cloud. Euclid Cloud is um, one of the tools that ECHA has made available to um, submit in an easy way uh, data to the agency. You can also download this um, Euclid 6 version to your desktop and prepare offline the skip notifications before submitting them to ECHA. And finally, there is also the option to um, submit system-to-system um, -system, um, notifications. This means that if you have an IT system that tracks your um, articles and products um, and you have all the information available, you can establish a direct link between the two softwares to submit thousands of notifications in one go. This is really one of the options that we would recommend for companies producing or selling um, lots of articles on the market containing um, substance of very high concern. Because ECHA is also um, aware that this is a duty that is um, quite cumbersome for some operators, we have tried to simplify some of the work by uh, um, making available some technical solutions that will um, simplify this notification duty. The first one is what we call the foreign user concept. This means that we allow companies to make agreements among themselves to um, decide who will submit um, the notifications and to submit um, notifications on each other's behalf. For this, we would recommend you to make some <clears throat> legal arrangements among the parties just to make sure that there is no doubt about the legal duties and responsibilities. We also have an option that you can refer to data already submitted. There's two um, ways to do that. Either you can submit a simplified skip notification. If the article is not changed when it arrives in your hands, the, you as a duty holder, you can benefit from the fact that you submit data in a simplified way without preparing your own dossier. So it is referring to data already in the system. The other option is what we call referencing. So if you have an article that is incorporated into a more complex article, so for instance, you include um, a bolt or a screw into a bicycle, then um, that duty holder can refer to data submitted already by the first actor. So if the information about the bolt or the screw is already in the skip database, you can simply refer to it. So these are all um, technical solutions to make the notification duty a little less um, burdensome. What I want to end with is that ECHA has made a lot of support material available. So you're not on your own. We have a material for you on our website that will help you and guide you through this process. We have designed a few steps that you can follow to identify if you have a legal duty under the uh, Waste Framework Directive to submit skip notifications, and if so, what steps you can take to make the skip notifications uh, a success. We have also made available user manuals for the skip database, um, a long list of uh, questions and answers, as well as other support material on our website. We also have um, the possibility to submit questions to our help desk if you have questions about the um, regulatory <clears throat> need to submit, submit um, questions, sorry, to submit notifications, or if you have technical difficulties in that submission process. And finally, we also have some more high level information available on the website in the form of a leaflet, a video, or an infograph that you can um, get familiar with yourself if this is new to you or with which you can share with your suppliers if you want to make them aware 
that this is um, a new legal duty that they need to comply with and that you need to comply with and you need their help with. So as a conclusion, I would like to say that the knowledge gap on hazardous substances and products and waste needs to be closed. There is currently uh, really a gap in information between the um, producers um, and other suppliers in the chain and especially waste operators who often have no clue what is the chemical content of the waste that they receive. It is therefore very difficult for them to um, make the right decisions in terms of waste treatment or recycling into new products. So continuing from that, it is really necessary that we ensure that the circular economy that we're trying to build in Europe is a non-toxic, uh, a non-toxic circular economy. We would remove substances of very high concern from the chain once we want to reincorporate them into recycled products. SKIP will provide transparency within the supply chain, but mostly also towards these waste operators and consumers. Consumers also have a right to know what substances of concern are in the products they buy on a daily basis. And finally, the ultimate success of the SKIP database would be an empty database. We would wish that all the substances of very high concern on the candidate list would be replaced by safer alternatives one day. And that is the ultimate step you can take to avoid having to submit SKIP notifications. So substitution remains key. Thank you very much.